Yeah, I don't know. There's all this stuff. You know, there's like these different kinds of famous uh, thought experiments that philosophers do. Um, I was, we were looking at one the other day because of a class I was doing, looking at it with my daughter. Uh, uh, one called the Experience Machine that was sort of interesting. Do you know about this? Uh, so it's just about like it's essentially the Matrix. Like it's a, a thing about sort of if you were, um, you know, given the chance to be hooked up onto an experience machine that made sure that you were always happy or something that would adjust your experience to maximize to, like so maybe you can't people can't be they need sort of uh, differences in levels of happiness to actually be happy but you can imagine something that uh, optimizes your happy happiness in your life and you're hooked up to a machine that regulated everything for this reason would you opt to do it and then you know it turns out a lot of people would say no uh, to that. Um, uh, anyhow, so what the takeaway is, is that uh, is there's maybe something for human beings to want to know, I mean, there's an advantage to knowing what's real suffering and what just appears as suffering now, but actually there's something to be said about uh, our avoidances or ways in which we delude ourselves and so more suffering might be better, right? Like there's presumably there must be something like a um, I don't know. I never do any of these just so evolutionary psychology uh, things, but like it's always fun to hypothesize that you can imagine some type of mechanism that human beings have developed to manage uh, their suffering and like by telling stories. There's something in this. Uh, there's something of this idea in Nietzsche that like ways in which we get to different ideas about the meaning of suffering and actually it's much of our lives get their meaning from these kinds of things so that we even end up embracing suffering. But there may be features where you want to cut through, uh, uh, you know, the illusion of different things and get people to recognize their suffering more really or for what it is or something else. So there's that side. So I could see doing it even without the, you know, the overall payoff I probably am, like you suggest, uh, interested in, in maybe finding something good or positive or worthwhile about it. But I just think, I don't know, for, most, for the most part, like I just think thinking about it is usually better off, like you're better off doing that at some level. Or if you can't help but think about it, then you're better off having someone to talk to about it. Maybe that is the minimum of the reducing the suffering with students that we have these thoughts, we don't have ways of sorting them out, but maybe if I do this class, I will get some sort of clarity about things that are on my mind. Um, but I think there's a natural kind of uh, therapeutic benefit to just talking about these things, finding ways of facing them. Maybe even if you do it in what seems to be from a, in a class where you do it from a certain distance, you can then go where you have some, you know, space and are more comfortable to sort it out on your own if you want to. So, yeah.